Hello, pipe community. This is Philip, and this is my year-end uh, tobacco review and top uh, five in each category. I did a little bit of soul searching, you might say, and realized that my I haven't really broadened or branched out that much this past year. I've kind of stuck with what I knew. I've accumulated a lot of tobaccos, various uh, blends and of both um, aromatic and English and of course Virginia's and things like that but I haven't really given them a fair shot as far as trying them repetitively to get get a kind of form a opinion so my hope is in the next year that I will do that and I will just determine some different blends that might align with some of the blends that you all enjoy as well as some that I might add to the list that you may not uh, have found. I do have a couple that I think you may that may have not been on your radar so these will be ones that you can check into. A couple of them unfortunately, uh, maybe one I think, is no longer available as um, the individual that blended it is no longer with us. So. Um, Without that, with, uh, having said that, I will start now with uh, the aromatics that I've been enjoying this past year. And I made a little note here, so you may see me referring to the notes and reading here. So uh, let's start with my top aromatic for 2014 would have to be Chief Katuna's Sugar Hollow. And that was blended by Dick Silverman. And he, this is the one that I mentioned that he is no longer with us. He uh, passed away this past year. And his daughters uh, closed the actual um, business. And he's no longer doing his, um, or, you know, they're no longer going to sell his blends. So that's uh, a shame. But... It was a burly Cavendish, black Cavendish blend, very good smoke, very easy on the tongue and so forth. So it was a very good blend. I continued to go back to it. I have some left, but not much. A uh, number two then would be Boswell's Piper's Pleasure. Everyone knows what that one is, I think. I'll go on to number three in the same uh, Boswell theme with Boswell's Cupcake. I found that one after seeing online someone else had uh, purchased it and enjoyed it. And I have to say it's a milder version, I think a little bit milder to the tongue and uh, palate. Great room note, uh, but it is uh, certainly an all-day smoke, something you could go to repetitively throughout the day. Uh, the next one would be kind of an old standby that I've had for quite some time, and that's Rich's Tobacco's Bill's Blend. And it's a unique blend of Cavendish's and Virginia's and vanilla. It also has Armanac Cognac sprinkled in it. So it's light enough for an all-day smoke, but it's got a little taste to it that's unique. So that's one that I might challenge you to ta taste. Uh, one of our pipe community friends, Stephen uh, W140, I believe it was. I uh, apologize if I didn't say that right, but uh, he's no longer on YouTube that much, or at least I haven't seen him for a while. So uh, he really raved about that one, if you'll recall. And that's how I got involved with that and enjoying it. Another one from Rich's Tobacco that I found this year was Sunday Morning. Rich's Tobacco's Sunday Morning. Uh, this is a mildly aromatic smoke. Um, draws most of its sweetness carefully select from carefully select Virginias and just enough burley to round out the flavor combined uh, they create a pleasant smoke for any time of day this may be one that I'll s replace my chief Katuna sugar hollow with simply because it mimics somewhat of the flavors that that has a couple of them to just be mentioned that I did enjoy throughout the year was Silum's Black, and uh, that uh, was a good smoke for me. And uh, Stephen Books' Red Gar Garland is one that I go back to and enjoy periodically as well. 
I'm not confident that he's uh, selling tobacco anymore. I tried to call him ver various times this past year and been unsuccessful of making connection. So if anyone knows anything about him, I'd be happy to know a little more. Uh, moving on to English blends, I think the top one for me this past year was Dunhill's Early Morning Pipe. Uh, I just began more of my search in the English blends. I have been kind of an aromatic dominant smoker for the past three years, and, or two years, however, two and a half years. So this one was one that I've enjoyed. I have a fond memory of me in the Virgin Islands with a trip of a lifetime I took with my family and smoking this uh, most mornings looking over the Caribbean Ocean. So this one is one that I, I really enjoyed this year. Another one is uh, F&K Sterling Balkan 759. That's purchased through Pipes and Cigars. I like that blend. It's, uh, it's a finely matured Virginia zesty oriental leaf and a hearty amount of, of Latakia. So that one was one that I enjoyed periodically throughout the year as well. Another one that I found uh, was Red Rattray's Red Rappery, and that was one that I'd seen um, a couple of different guys talking about in the YouTube community. And um, so for that, I thank you guys for that. And uh, another one then that I've just recently enjoyed is Squadron Leader. So I am moving and br branching out somewhat, but again, you can see I'm limited. I've got sky's the limit. I just looked at Tobacco Review and they have a um, 400 and some choices for um, English blends. So I'm going through that. I'm going to whittle that down and look and see what ones I'd like to try. So that's my top 10, uh, five of aromatic, five of English for this year. Thank you for watching. Any suggestions you may have for me in this new year for either one of those categories would be awesome. I will say that I have looked into Just For Him um, as a company recently and purchased some of their products. So that was one that I stumbled onto from uh, Hillam. I believe, uh, I can't think of his pet community name, I'm sorry. Uh, but he uh, had mentioned that. So anyway, thank you to him. So I will leave it there and thanks for watching. Have a great new year and uh, I'll see you soon.